While we get ready, um, if you don't mind moving toward the middle of each row so we can know which, how many open seats are left. Do you mind scrunching up? If you have a seat in between you, just moving over. Thank you. We're still having some people come in. We want to find them a good seat. And kids are welcome to sit in the, on, the, on the floor in the front if you'd like. It takes one kid and everybody else will follow. <laughs> but there's plenty of room in the front. Or adults that want to sit. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello down there. Hello. Hello, and welcome to the Great Organ Spooktacular 2022. We're so thrilled to have you at Plainfield United Methodist Church. Um, my name is Nick Fennig. I'm the organist here at PUMC. The Organ Spooktacular has become somewhat of a tradition here at PUMC. Um, this year's Spooktacular is going to be, well, spooktacular, as you not only get to hear this wonderful pipe organ music played by Wolf von Roos, um, but he also got to bring some of his friends, um, Vandy Enzor on vocals, Cecily Terhune on saxophone, Thomas Brinkley on bass, and Rocky Rodriguez on drums. Uh, this is the first concert in our 2022-2023 uh, concert series, music concert series. Please join us for our next concert, which will take place on Sunday, December 4th at 6.30 p.m., the Carol-a-thon. So um, see you in the program for more details. Um, similar feel, but you'll wear your holiday garb instead of your Halloween garb. <laughs> 
And as always, thank you to the spectacular PUMC Music Guild, which makes these free concerts possible. If you feel so inclined, we invite you to donate a couple dollars to the Music Guild by dropping your offering in the uh, offering plates in the back of the sanctuary. Your generosity lets us offer these concerts to our community free of charge. Just to note that these less than spectacular folding chairs uh, you are currently sitting on are indeed temporary as we wait for the permanent comfy ones to arrive. Uh, there will be a short intermission, which would be a great time to submit your tune request. Um, Wolf is going to improvise on a tune uh, that he chooses out of a pumpkin in the back. Uh, so if you have a tune you maybe would like him to improvise on, please write it on a piece of paper and put it in the pumpkin. It's the, um, w Brent is holding up the pumpkin right now, right there. There's the pumpkin head. So write your uh, tune name in there during intermission. Um, and lastly, please join us for a spooktacular reception, of course, immediately following the concert in the lobby. Uh, thank you to the Staff Parish Committee and the Concert Series Committee for organizing and hosting the reception. Once again, thank you for again for coming tonight. It's wonderful to see so many people here. Um, and with, without further ado, please help me welcome Wolf von Roos and friends.
Girl Scouts? You have cookies? <laughs> I'm a sucker for lemons, so if you have some of those, I can see my address. Okay? Oh, well, yeah. Again, I was not expecting all this um, much of a crowd, so this is really cool. Um, this is my very first time playing on this organ for concerts, and I'm in love with it, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> for a small space, I've heard stories of how it's overpowering, but this is actually really nice. It's very perfect, and it just really gets the room going. So um, it's very cool. So that first piece you heard was the Saber Dance by Arm Catcher Room. I can't pronounce that name for any of the reasons, because it's foreign. So um, the next piece you're going to hear is a uh, original piece by a friend of mine who gave this to me for my high school graduation. I performed a concert at Christchurch Cathedral in Indianapolis. And this is a dedicated piece for that occasion. Um, he's very, uh, my friend Aaron is very secular, so this uh, translation, uh, it's actually Portrait of Hell, which you'll hear a lot of uh, very funky, augmented um, patterns. But it's really beautiful, it's really uh, uh, luminescent for this instrument. It sounds really good on this instrument, so. Uh, yeah, hopefully you'll have as much fun as I do. And yeah, I do work in real life, but I've, I've been told it's really hot. It's going to be hot, so I'm not going to wear this thing the whole time, so that's how you're going to see it from now. Unless I decide to put it back on, so that's what you're going to get. So without that, I'm just going to go back over here. <laughs>
There goes Rocky. Everybody decided to wear capes today. You just stealing my thunder today. I did it for you, man. No, you didn't. Uh, you totally did. <laughs> it's all for you. <laughs> Rascal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, um, hope you like that piece. I really enjoy playing it. I love playing for my high school graduation. It was a got a, I got a good crowd pleaser for that. So it was uh, really fun and very augmented. I love dissonant stuff and very weird patterns. So it's a lot of fun for me to play that stuff. And the next piece you're going to hear is kind of the same thing. Um, this is actually one of my favorite pieces. This is Olivier Messiaen, Aperceau de Glisse Eternelle, the operation of the eternal church. So. Picture us right now in this church, and all of a sudden the ground shakes, and the church rises up out of nowhere and just goes to heaven. That's what this piece is. So you're going to hear this full dynamic range of this organ, and I hope you don't get spooked by it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the point, but still. <laughs> well, hope you enjoy this one.
Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that one. That's also one of my favorites. Um, the next piece is a by a female composer by the name of Carol Williams, British uh, international concert organist. Uh, she's actually a really uh, flamboyant musician, and this is one of her pieces, which is entitled Twilight. Um, it kind of just gives a picture of itself, you know, a twilight uh, in the sky. Um, this features the strings of the organ, which will give you more of a hypnotic effect. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I might fall asleep to this. You never know. Oh yeah, um, I know we're all wanting to watch football, but try not to clap early. <laughs> but I'm kidding. Um, yeah, uh, this is Twilight Opus 3 by Carol Williams.
So this is the first. You're going to hear one of my pieces. And that. I wrote this when I was in college. It was 4 o'clock in the morning and I was supposed to be doing an essay. So I got curious instead and decided to experiment. I had like five Red Bulls and this piece kind of resembles that. So <laughs> I don't know why I chose to torture myself today but oh well. Um, this is uh, this is why I call this the nutcase of Kai because I was crazy to do this. So <laughs> hope you like it. Uh, it's a lot of exercise which I don't know why I'm doing this myself either. It's supposed to be a fun night, not exercise, not gym class. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. How awesome was Wolf's piece? <laughs> well, maybe they did that so you can see us better, actually. Yeah, probably. Sip a microphone. What? Sip a microphone, you're asking. Would you like to say something? Nope, go ahead. <laughs> all righty. So, I am Vandy Enzor, also known as Christine Daye. Of course, if you have a soprano and an organist together, you're going to do a set from the Phantom of the Opera, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, actress, singer, um, voice over artist, she is everything. So go see her in the shows. And, yeah. Oh, so, thank you. So we'll start with the point of no return, which actually happens at the end of the musical. This is where Christine and the Phantom are in the show together, and he's trying to lure her away. And then at the end, he opens a trap door, and they disappear into the depths of the theater. And everything is set on fire and goes up and blazes. And you think that all is lost. So it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I <can> <laughs> Of right or wrong, 
one final question. How long should we to wait before we won? When will the blood begin to race? The sleeping bud burst into bloom. When will the flames at last consume us? Past the point of no return, the final threshold, the beginning cast, so stand and watch it be. Time sharpens, heightens each sensation. Darkness stirs and wakes imagination. Silently the senses abandon the defenses. Gently, night unfurls its splendor. Grasp it, sense it, tremulous and tender. Turn your face away from the garish light of day. Turn your thoughts away from cold, unfeeling light. And listen to the music of the night. Close your eyes and surrender to your darkest dreams. Put your thoughts on the life you knew before. Deftly, music shall caress you. Hear it, feel it, secretly possess you. Open up your mind, let your fantasies unwind in this darkness which you know you cannot fight. The darkness of the music of the night. Let your mind start a journey through a strange new world. Leave our thoughts of the world you knew before. Let your soul take you where you long to be. Intoxication, touch me, trust me, savor each sensation. Let the dream begin, let your darkest side give in to the power of the music that I write. The power of the music 
Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun with that one. Told you she was cool. <laughs> we wanted to give you some variety on this program. So our next, also we're in a church, so you know, this is hallowed ground. So we, even though we have some, you know, creepy evil things, we also wanted to have, you know, something befitting of this glorious venue. So we are going to do one of the Aves for you. This is Caccini, Caccini's Ave Maria, which I have actually never done before, an audience before. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Wolf actually suggested this one, and I'm, I'm glad that he did. It's a, it's a great one. Very different than what we just did. So I hope that you enjoy it. Very different era. So this is, that was, you know, the 80s, the 1980s, right? This is from somewhere between 1551 and 1618, so... What? Oh, The Phantom of the Opera? No, the movie is from then, but it was written in the 80s. Yeah, look up the Sarah Brightman version. Yeah. <laughs> well, either way, you know, in, in our lifetimes, the other one, right? This one, well, in, it, actually, no, it was before my time. In some of our lifetimes, but, <laughs> and wolves, before, before wolves too, <laughs> but, but this one is from none of our lifetimes, so we're, we're going to bring it back to life.
We have something a little bit different for you. You might have noticed we have other instruments up here too. So this is going to be just a little bit of a taste of what is to come after intermission. So a little, little preview. This is a Cicely Terry Hood on the saxophone. She is a master at it. She is a genius. She, yes, you are. She is everything. <laughs> So what's great about Baroque music, not necessarily for Wolf, but for me, what's great about Baroque music is that the first time through, you do it as written, and then the second time through, you get to improvise and doodle around and have fun with it. So every time you do it, it's a little bit different. That's the thing I love about jazz as well. The first time through, you do it as written, and then you take turns soloing, so... It actually is kind of perfect to segue from a Baroque piece to a jazz piece, I think. So that's what we're going to do for you now. Since you went away, the days grow long. 